Hello, it's your favorite Solaris guy once again. Uh, I'm not part of the dev team though, so I'm probably not that much of a favorite person. But still, we're going to be talking about some changes that are coming up in the May update that is dropping in May, as the name already implies. Yes, there is some religious stuff coming in our general direction. Oh my god, it's finally here. We may actually have something that vaguely looks like religion systems. Uh, that is... The Galactic Community. The Galactic Community is going to have a new resolution option under the Environment and Technology option, which is, I believe, sanctioning under technology, where you can, in fact, put tithes on robots. Yes, robot tax made possible by spiritualists. Isn't that just fun? Yeah, that's pretty much how far the religious stuff is going to go in the uh, upcoming update. So if you're the kind of empire that is like, hey, you over there with the robots, knock it off, and they still do it, then you can denounce them and make them feel really bad for themselves. And if you're the kind of player like myself, who really likes to play with robots because they are just amazing, then you obviously want to avoid that. In this particular case, that wouldn't be an issue because I am, in fact, the Senate, and nothing will happen to me. But yeah, there is a bunch of other stuff as well coming in our direction, which is a complete overhaul of how the edict system works. So right now... The edict system is listed in this particular category here. Look at that. There's education campaigns, farming subsidies, yada yada, all this stuff that is unlocked. This is going to change yet again. So, first of all, how is all this stuff going to work? Well, there will be a soft cap to how many edicts you can run. It's very similar to the soft cap to star bases, the soft cap to naval capacity for the um, Empire Sprawl, etc, etc. So if you go over the soft cap, you will be hit with a malice. Now, how is this soft cap actually uh, calculated? Well, it has to do with your empire type. So for instance, right now I'm a dictatorial empire, and dictatorial empires will have the opportunity to have a different amount of um, edicts applied to them. So for instance, the Imperial Cult will have one additional edict capacity but also have a reduction in edict cost. Uh, the Executive Vigor, for instance, will give a increased edict capacity of plus two, which makes ex Executive Vigor a lot more interesting, actually, because if we go to Executive Vigor right here, uh, there it is. Uh, right now, it increases the edict duration plus 50%. And in the future, it will change to... Uh, adding an additional edict capacity, plus it reduces the cost of each edict. I'm not entirely sure if I'm happy with this. I really like Executive Vigor in, in, in a mechanical sense, because the edict duration plus 50% is pretty strong, uh, because it just means you don't need to spend all that much influence all the time. So that's something you want to keep in the back of your head. But yeah, uh, authorities, these ones... Uh, the ones that are in the game that don't really do anything except for giving you some goals every once in a while uh, are actually going to have a functionality. Now, I'm pretty sure that Hive Minds, Robots, and Megacorps are not going to have any additional functionality because they already have their own unique gameplay attached to them, but it's something you want to keep in mind. And there's quite a lot of these, actually. Some of these you can only run so many of. So, for instance, Nutritional Plentitude, which is one of the newer ones, um, Nutritional Plentitude right now is actually under policies, under food policy, Nutritional Plentitude. Uh, it's actually going to change. It's going to become a edict. And I quickly need to take a look here. Um, nutritional Plentitude. Yeah, it lasts until cancelled. So this thing is going to move into this menu. And you will have a little icon up here that says, uh, this is how many of these edicts you can run. Now, it will increase pop growth speed, biological pop happiness. Uh, but, of course, it will increase uh, pop sprawl, food upkeep costs, and um, etc., etc. But it's going to move into this directory, which means that the food policy uh, directory is going to be cleared out a little bit. Which I think is a very interesting approach. Um, but yeah, it's something you want to keep in mind. Uh, things like Fortify the Border, which is a brand new one that you can have on permanently, uh, where you get additional stations. Fleet Supremacy, where you get additional naval capacity. Mining subsidies, farming subsidies. Uh, Map the Stars, which is my one of my favorites, actually. Map the Stars is so very good at the start of the game because of the survey speed and anomaly chance discovery. Um, these are all edicts that you will be able to enable and they just don't run out as you can see right here in this particular case it lasts 
13 years. But then, of course, there's some timed edicts as well. So, and those are just the classic ones, really. Uh, so, for instance, the education campaigns, recycling campaigns, healthcare campaigns, terraforming gases, uh, living me uh, metal, mega construction, all that stuff, as well as the unity ambitions will all be timed. So that right there is a really, really big change in terms of how the edict system is going to work. So a very interesting thing, actually, because... I am um, I'm curious on how all this stuff is going to work out in terms of the long term because they're clearly building up to something or they're trying to streamline the UI a little bit, which is rather cool. Now, one thing that is important to note, any of the rare resource campaigns and edicts such as the terraforming, the gases, uh, improvements to other things, uh, we already touched on the living metal mega construction uh, one, they will not be changed because all the strategic resources ones they have a specific goal in mind and you have specific uh, abilities to actually enable those so those are not going to change and that brings us to the federation changes yes there's gonna be federation changes yet again oh the 2.6 patch has only just gotten cold and now there's gonna be some more changes well they're not so much changes the more additions now as you can see right here we are in fact in a federation and here we go to our laws and let's say we want to propose a law you can see that the, there is just this voting system etc so if we want to propose a 40-year succession term we can say no or yes which is fine however uh in the future we will be able to use favors as well with this so the favor system is actually going to tie into this which means that in certain conditions you can have favors from your fellow federation members and basically say hey i would like to use those favors to enact the laws that i am currently proposing which is a nice little addition it makes a lot of sense considering well um favors by themselves are pretty broken as they are i will give you an example here uh let's take a look here hey you alien yes you're pathetic to me that's good uh i'm just gonna do a trade deal with you and i'm just gonna give you like 10 favors and that's 80 so i would like to have some what do i need here food or alloys ah, alloys is good so i would like to get like um yeah, a bunch of alloys a month. Yeah, like like this much. Does that work for you? 17 alloys per month is a pretty pretty beefy chunk to say the least. Like his total is 17. That's half of his um, of his alloy income that they would just give to me, no problem whatsoever, and they will agree to that. So, and the favor system can be very much abused like that, especially in the early game, because favors are effectively worthless in the early game and not really a thing until you're later. And I don't really have, I've never really seen the AI use the favors <clears throat> in a negative way. So yeah, that's maybe something something for the devs to look into. But it's uh, the favor system by itself, it could use a little bit of AI tweaking, but that's not what we're really talking about here. It's more of a case of uh, it's going to be added to the wonders that is the law system. Now, in addition, laws as well as other things within the uh, Federation are going to change a little as well. The centralization, for instance, uh, will be voted upon based on the cohesion of the federation so for instance right now our cohesion is pretty bad it is currently at minus 98 if it's super high however then there will be a higher bonus to all empires and they will be more likely to vote for it so there's a bigger impetus to actually apply a uh, an envoy to your federation in order to get stuff done i think that right there is a pretty decent idea because right now you, everybody just throws their envoys to, uh, at the galactic community on mass which is kind of how you should be doing it but still it, it just means that envoys are even more powerful than they already are specifically the uh, civics for diplomatic corps are already really powerful and you add pacifism on top of that and you get even more envoys actually no it's xenophile i think but yeah it gets pretty ridiculous when you start the game off with six envoys and you can just can't go completely ham with your diplomatic power especially if you add your diplomatic stance to uh or set your diplomatic stance to cooperative because it even adds your it, it adds even more value to diplo weight once the may patch comes out we'll dive a little bit deeper into the details behind the galactic community because uh it's clearly not completely done since federations came out so i want to wait a little bit before we do a full tutorial on this particular subject uh what else ah yes joint operations this is 
rather exciting to me. I am all about that flavor. I am all about those events. Distant Stars to me was one of the best expansions because, well, it just adds added so much additional flavor through events. And now those events will be extended to the Federations themselves. Uh, the Federations will have special projects that they can work on with their entire faction. So imagine, say, um, some of the special projects that you have in Civ where you can assign a certain amount of resources to... Uh, it's like the World's Fair in Civ, right? Where you assign a certain amount of resources. Uh, it, it feels very similar to that in this particular case, although it's completely contained within the Federation itself where you can fight to be top dog or something along those lines. It could also be that it's just a event and you put resources into it, like scientists and stuff like that, to work on these things. So, for instance, research cooperatives, which is what I am right now, can uh, engage in joint archaeological sites across the region of space. So, for instance, I've got a couple of dig sites over here. So, is this fossilized remains one, which is currently active. Uh, there's a couple of other ones, uh, sm a smattering of them all over the place. And you can slowly but steadily start working on those with your federation as a whole so that's a nice little addition there um let's see what other options are here galactic units and research cooperatives alike may also find themselves dealing with strange new stellar phenomena at their federation capitals hegemonies will have the option of a grand project to celebrate their cultural uniformity and also who is um you know show everybody who's in charge and military alliances can partake in joint training exercises so possibly to increase the uh, amount of damage output on their fleets trade leagues will be able to uh, increase trade value overall and i hope that uh, in addition all of this stuff do give bonuses to general cohesion if it's a successful project and you're working on it with your entire federation you should get a bonus to cohesion. It makes perfect sense. Uh, finally, then there are some tweaks to origins. Hegemonies, for instance, they've had some problems where, for instance, let's say that you spawn in this little pocket. Uh, the chances of the player empire spawning in this little system over here and being completely locked in is completely been negated. It should not happen anymore. So yeah, a couple of big changes coming to the game, especially with the edict system being slightly changed and how it functions, adding that soft cap which is a pretty big deal um the galactic community adding some flavor stuff for religious empires this could be a nice new road to a future expansion involving religions that would be really nice but we shall see in the meantime though uh if you're watching this particular game and you're thinking by yourself what are you playing as a spec this does not look like a standard commonwealth of a man game no as you can see i'm actually playing with the complex uh, complex origins mod and specifically with the patron moon start where you in fact as the player uh, start with a patron moon on your empire and there it is the patron moon it's a uh, organic super organism that inhabits any sort of moon here and it looks pretty darn sexy look at that blood red burgundy ball it even has some clouds but it gives every single planet that it orbits a nice little bonus it's pretty powerful with a 10 percent research bonus as well as giving increased stability which is really really powerful but you can only really uh, get another one of these around a planet where there is a moon so for instance this relic world that i found had a moon which means that i could plant down down yet another patron moon this other planet this industrial world over here doesn't have a moon so it gets a negative modifier called the missing patron moon which it impacts all sorts of stuff negatively so yeah um something for you to maybe check out i may do a video about complex origin mods in the near future uh keep your eyes peeled but that will be it for today i want to thank you so much for watching and of course i want to thank my patrons as well it's been a tumultuous week i've had some very long hours at work 12 hours a day for five days straight is not exactly what i like to do but hey sometimes you will have the toe the line the joys of being essential personnel anyway we're gonna go on and lock this thing down thank you so much for watching and until next time take good care of yourselves and as always each other